Hi, and uh, welcome. I am attempting to build my own cat condo out of some uh, spare materials that I've had around my my basement um, for a while. You can see I'm in an unfinished basement here. And so um, I've had some stuff lying around and um, I'm going to try and make my own cat condo. I'm hoping that um, all I need to do is really invest in some carpeting and uh, maybe some tools that I don't have already like a jigsaw and some other stuff and hopefully I can get that done. Uh, I wanted to start by showing you uh, how the whole thing began and uh, where it's at right now. So I'm gonna, oh, let's get started. Okay, here it is done, uh, all assembled. You can see it's just a three level guy. Um, that tall one over there is uh, about five, five and a half feet tall. My cats love it, they're not there right now, but they already love it. Okay, I was really lucky. I had this huge, huge, I don't even know if I can get it all in here. I had this huge piece of um, plywood. Somebody had given this to me. It was actually, um, it was like a little stage for kids to stand on and stuff like that. You can see if I go to the other side, it's carpeted. It's got like a nice, um, it's got like a nice uh, birch framing around the edges. It's even got some carpeting on this side and that sort of thing. But it's big, it's like a good 8x10. So, uh, and you can even see, I've already started uh, disassembling, I'm pointing the light here, I started disassembling it and taking off some of the, the framing that was on the underside, uh, which I think will actually make some, some, some good raw materials for a cat condo. Uh, but this is big enough to make a base and probably a couple of shelves out of. And so, you can see here is that uh, I've been playing around with some sketches and that was one of my first sketches. And then uh, they sort of get a little bit more mature from there. You can right here. I started to get a little more, more of an idea. A little bit more of an idea. And then finally, um, right here is my final plan. So uh, what, I'm, what I'm planning to do is I'm, I'm planning to have a center post, a four by four post right down the middle. Um, I'm planning on having a shelf right about here, maybe a foot and a half up like a one by one or a one and a half by one and a half shelf over here maybe I'll put um, an, a u-shaped concrete tubing covered in carpeting then all the way up at the top is going to be like a one and a half by one and a half foot shelf for them um, to sleep on and then there's going to be that sisal rope covered climber right there so I anticipate needing about 50 inches at the bottom uh, you can see that right here like maybe if I had a 50 inches, you know, almost a little bit over four feet. So 25 inches from here to here, 25 inches from here to here, something like that. Um, that should make a nice base. You can see I've sort of mapped out an overhead view here. So you can see how the triangular or the trapezoidal piece will fit like this. And then that sisal rope climb will be over here somewhere. So a few minutes here to create what I think it will look like out of boxes and stuff like that and I think that's what it's going to look like. You can see the center post right there will come up and be relatively centered on the um, the base. There'll be a, so that's that's roughly um, four by two and a half the base and then uh, I'm using five gallon buckets but there's going to be the post in the center and then there's going to be two feet over here and I think that's going to create a lot of stability um, because it sort of raises the the framing up a good foot and a half. So what I've planned here is a three foot by four foot base, roughly three by four. Okay, so here we are, and I've made some progress, as you can see. Um, I've cut out my base right here. It's, uh, it's about four feet by two feet, maybe two feet and two inches. Okay, and then I read online that it's really important that you test out a structure um, before you start carpeting it, just to make sure that it will do what you want and support the weight you want. And so um, that's what we see here. So... I've got my main post right here, 
Um, you should not get pressure treated lumber for your cat condo. And so I didn't. You can see right here what I've done is I've gotten two two by fours and um, I just uh, I glued them together, I screwed them together and uh, I let them sit overnight. Um, and so they're sitting sort of in this back third of my base. I had planned on having these feet over here and those are just two by fours. Um, they have one screw coming up from the bottom right now just so I can test them out. And I didn't originally plan on having something here but I rethought, I rethought it with the weight of the main post. I wanted to have another piece of support here. Um, so I'm going to actually connect. I'm going to connect the main post and this other post right here. This is just a leftover from the two 2x4s I put together. The 2x4s were 10 feet long. I cut them down to about 5 feet, um, which left 3 feet uh, or so. Did I say 10 feet? I think they were 8 feet long. Sorry. Uh, and I cut 3 feet off and I kept 5 feet. Uh, so it's going to be a pretty hefty cat condo. Then one of the other things I did was um, two things to secure. One, I got some L brackets to secure each of my 2x4s and even the main post. I'll secure that way too. Um, and then when I go to build a shelf, I'm either going to use the tops of a 2x4 or I'm going to attach and create a, a, a fake ledge uh, for, the, for the shelves to go on. And so I've cut a shelf to size so you can see that when I put this shelf on here like this, see, bonk, there it is, nice and sturdy. That shelf fits great right there. It's going to be a huge shelf down there, a smaller shelf in the middle, and then one on the top. One thing I want to point out is that um, this, what's now a 4x4, four four, is just balancing here. I have not, I have not screwed it in or anything, um, and it's balancing great, so uh, I'm really optimistic that it's going to do a good job, especially if I connect it from here over to there somehow, whether it's with plywood or something a little more secure. So I think we're good to go, uh, and I'm going to start working on carpeting and doing that kind of thing. So here we are. Um, I've made some progress. It's been about 12 hours worth of work. I've been working every night on this for a couple hours. Um, what you can see here is there's the base, and um, I've carpeted. The base that was actually a really easy process the hardest part was uh, the corners which i can show you on this piece right here because um, you know when you've got a square piece like this and you fold one corner over then you've got a lot of overlap and so what i had to end up doing was cutting you know cutting the top part at an angle the side part at an angle and then making the meat and then just pulling the corner over i don't have an exact process i just sort of felt it out and um tried to secure that stuff as good as I could. What I wanted to point out was that I made the base bigger than the opening to my doorway, which I'm fine with because I want it really tall. Um, so I had to bring the base in and then assemble it in the room. And uh, one of the things I've decided to use are these L brackets to secure it. Um, hopefully they've got enough strength, but you can see I've got one on each of my, uh, you know, my vertical structures. So uh, I am going to use lag bolts on the major on the major guy and then I'm going to secure it here as well I'm going to use more than lag bolts so I'm going to use a couple of screws per either 2x4 or the uh, the 4x4 that I created that central post so um, I'll take another video after I've assembled some more uh, you can see that I've got the sisal rope on the major post here there it is that was uh that was harder than I thought only because that's fifty that's fifty um feet of sisal rope right there and it comes out to about a foot and a half on the post uh, if you pack it really tight and you do a good job at that so that gives you a, a little frame of reference there okay I'm gonna keep working here and uh, keep assembling and I'll show you as I make some progress what's what ends up happening you can see my kitty's already curious it's just a three level guy. Um, that tall one over there is uh, about five, five and a half feet tall. My cats love it. They're not there right now, but they already love it. Um, I had a heck of a time getting this post, this big post, straight. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure why it had been straight the whole time. And then I lag bolted it in, in sort of like a diagonal pattern. 
So one on one corner and then one on the other corner lag bolted. Um, lag bolts were about two or three inches long, maybe more. Uh, and then I just used two to three inch regular wood screws on the other diagonals to secure it. Um, so, so yeah, you can see I ran out of I ran out of carpeting, but I'll finish those or I'll put like sisal sisal rope. The sisal came out great. Just one small section. Again, that's 50 feet right there, a sisal. It doesn't get you very far if you pack it nice and dense. Um, so, yeah, that's it. It does wobble a little at the top. So yeah, I'll wobble it. You can see it wobbling a little bit. Um, but nothing too major. And uh, both cats, or at least 10-pounders, can sit up on the top and look out. They've already sort of done that. So, yeah, you get the idea. That's it. There's my cat condo. Um... Total price, I would say, would be uh, 100 to $150. I'm just estimating. I still have to buy more carpet or sisal for those front rungs. And I think I'm going to do like um, one of those concrete tubes, like a circle right there in the middle maybe, so that the cats can jump up and into that and give it a little more dimensionality and some playfulness to it. But uh, yeah, I'd say 100 to 150 I had to buy the jigsaw and I had to buy the stapler. So that was like 40, 40 or so dollars of it. Um, so if you think about it, I got two really great tools uh, out of the deal, and it cost about what it cost for some of the, the more cheaply made ones uh, online, and it's nice carpeting. One thing I will say about the carpeting, I'll note it. So you can see here, those are staples, and the staples leave little marks that you can see, like little cross marks there. I, in some spots, I used little brad nails. I just hammered them in. It does a much, much better job, I have to say. Um, so if you have the option of using a brad nailer or even just nailing the carpet down in spots uh, and using the stapler just to secure certain parts of it, like underneath the stapler is great, but in the parts where people can see, it starts to become a little bit more visible. So uh, that's a recommendation. At least be ready to do both, uh, the, the brad nails and the stapler. Uh, just so that you can get like a, a finishing touch to it uh, that looks nice. Okay.